Okay, we are um, we are recording. So, Rich, whenever you're um, ready to go. All right, we'll call the uh, Tuesday, July 21st, 2020 meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission to order. Um, Ryan, would you yep. call the roll? Absolutely. Uh, Chairman Roberts. Well, not yet. Here. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I assume we're, we're doing the, uh, all right, so I am here. Uh, Commissioner Hammer? Here. Commissioner Dean? Here. Commissioner Edwards is not here. Commissioner Hughes, not here. Commissioner Oigel, not here. Commissioner Silver, not here. Commissioner Vieira, not here. On to the alternates. Commissioner Antoniak, not here. Uh, Commissioner Drake? I don't believe so. And Commissioner Homiki? Here. All right. So we have the bare minimum of five uh, members participating right now. And what, what I was going to mention to the applicant is that um, under our bylaws, it requires five affirmative votes for any, uh, any motion to carry. So if we do get to the point where we close the public hearing tonight and nobody else shows up, uh, it would require the unanimous vote of all five of the people here uh, to to approve the uh, approve the application. Um, one thing I'd entertain a motion to move the organizational meeting to after the public hearing. So moved. Okay. Second. Any discussion? Not all in favor. Say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. So Ryan, would you read the? Notice of the public hearing, please. Absolutely. Item 3.2, public hearing. Application 204420Z, Justin Roy, seeking a special permit in accordance with Section 52I of the Weathersfield Zoning Regulations for Temporary Construction Staging Area at 207 Church Street. Okay, thank you. Um, is the applicant here? Looks yeah. like there he is. There, no, he's good now. Okay. Uh, um, yes, I'm here. Okay. Could you just please identify yourself by name and address for the record and tell us what it is that you're proposing to do? Yep. My name is Justin Roy. I'm uh, representing Baltazar Contractors. Uh, we're the construction firm that's been hired by the Metropolitan District Commission to install the new water main replacement. Uh, along Church Street and Knott Street in the town of Weathersfield. Um, we are proposing to use uh, the property at 207 215 for construction staging, specifically during the construction of the project. Okay. <laughs> and in the application, you well, we have a memo to the commission from uh, Peter Gillespie and Denise Bradley, uh, generally identifying what it is that's proposed to be done, uh, which is largely taken from uh, your letter of July 7th to the commission, um, indicating that the length of the intended use is August of this year through June of next year. Um, plan to use the northeast corner of the existing parking lot between 207 and 215 Church Street, which is south of the building and west of the railroad tracks. The majority of the project work will be completed during the daytime, eight hours between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. A minor portion of the work is within the Silestine Highway, which DOT is requiring the work to be completed at night for this work only. The hours of work will be, be between 8 p.m. and 5 a.m. Types of storage, construction equipment and vehicles, pipe fittings and clean fill such as sand bedding, crushed stone and gravel. Traffic throughout the day, equipment and vehicles will be using the property to bring get materials as needed, perform the construction. Most traffic will be at the beginning of the shift and end of the shift while materials, materials are mobilized to the actual work zone 
within the street is is that accurate and is there any additional information that um, that you'd like to provide uh, yep that that description is accurate um, by use of this staging area this will allow um, all the equipment to be removed off the street uh, which would be a benefit to the public um, obviously the construction uh, will need to go on and take place uh, regardless. So if, if we're allowed to use this staging area, um, there'll be less uh, obstructions and, and materials in the tree belt, um, less impact at the end of the day. Um, at the end of the day, it would look like, uh, you know, there, there'll be nothing on, on the street. Uh, this will allow the job to progress faster and smoother. Um, the time frame that I listed in the application is August through June. Um, that is the duration of the contract. We anticipate it to be completed sooner and also keep in mind that uh, construction in New England typically has a winter shutdown period. So they're, uh, with the cold and the snow, there's typically no water work allowed uh, in, in the months of December, January, February, and possibly March, depending on, on the weather. Um, yeah, I was just going to ask a question real quick. Uh, are okay, you storing, sorry. are you storing all of the uh, materials like up front, or are you doing it in stages? Are you like, is this, is this um, something where you're doing like a third at a time, or the whole thing all at once? Yep, that's a great question. Um, the pipe, we'll try to bring in the pipe as we need it because the pipe takes a bigger footprint. Uh, so that will try to coordinate it and, and get pipe delivered uh, once every week or every two weeks as, as we put it in the ground. Um, the smaller things, the fittings, the valves, um, the things that the guys will be using daily, we'll probably stockpile and get, and get the amount we need for the job so we have it on hand. Um, it's worth noting that this project, MDC is taking all the fill that's dug out of the ground so we're not going to be storing um, dramatic amounts of, of dirt and earth. It's going to be hauled directly to an MDC facility uh, in Bloomfield. So it's going to be hauled directly off site. Um, so the amount of material that we're going to be looking to store here is, is just going to be the minimal amount of sand, um, processed gravel to put back in the new road at the end of the day uh, and clean materials like that, all asphalt, and concrete rubble will be hauled directly off site. Uh, it will never be dropped in the staging area. The, um, the, the site plan just kind of shows generally where it's going to be, where the, the stuff will be located. And it's on the uh, easterly side of the property up against the railroad tracks. Um, do you have any ballpark sense of what the volume of sand, gravel, stone material will be um, and, you know, how high it will be in a pile, uh, as well as how many trips a day you anticipate during the construction? Yep. So on the site layout plan, um, we're thinking of utilizing the existing vegetation that, that borders the railroad as a natural buffer um, between our staging area and the residents on the other side of the railroad tracks. Um, so the material will not be stacked higher uh, than that vegetation, uh, which will not be an obstruction. And we're thinking to store the dry materials, the fittings and the pipes and the valves on the building side. Um, that way it would, it would keep it cleaner. Uh, as far as construction vehicles um, coming and going, we plan on having two dump trucks uh, working with the crew. So those two dump trucks um, may make uh, round, round trips. They may make uh, half a dozen round trips uh, in, during the day uh, to get materials. Okay. Peter, in your memo, you indicate that the uh, special permit is under 5.2.1. Other uses similar to permitted uses. Was that your terminology, or is that what 
we've done with similar projects in the past? Uh, it's, it's the only category that we could fit a temporary, we don't have a temporary use category, for example. So this is the nearest thing uh, that would allow this to uh, come before the commission for your uh, review in the previous applications, um, for example, on Elm Street and then on Middletown Avenue that yeah. you may remember, uh, those were in, uh, one was in the agricultural zone and one was in the residential zone. So they're different set of regulations. We haven't had one, or at least I haven't uh, processed one that's in a commercial zone. This property is in the town center zone. So, um, uh, so it's, it's unique in that regard. And uh, as I said earlier, it's the only category that we could figure to be a catch-all for something like this. Okay, thanks. Peter, in, in those other examples in the residential and the agricultural zone where we allowed essentially temporary construction staging, how, how was that allowed? I'm assuming in a residential zone, for example, that was probably not a permitted use as listed. We have a catch-all like this one uh, in those zones as well, and that's kind of what we categorized it as. So that's why we went with this similar uh, catch-all for other, you know, undefined um, uses. Okay. I asked a, uh, like a logistics question. Do we have, I guess this is a question for Justin, like how, how your company would operate in terms of what's the existing condition of that pavement? What's the existing pavement structure? Do we know that dump trucks in and out? Because it sounds like two dump trucks in and out relatively regularly. It's not just going to be within the footprint of the laydown area. You're going to be doing some U-turns, K-turns, whatever they're doing. Um, is there is there anything that that's done, maybe Peter as well, if you want to chime in, for um, ensuring that the walkaway condition once this construction project is done is roughly equal to or better than uh, what's existing out there today. I realize that this isn't really like an active site today. Um, so I don't know what kind of disrepair the, the pavement might be in or, or what. I'm just, I'm curious how we assure that the walkaway condition is going to at least be comparable to, to what the existing condition is today. So as, as far as the uh, public right of way, uh, the Church Street gets a complete mill and overlay when our project is completed. So after the water main is installed, um, we need to come back and do permanent paving and do a curb to curb milling and paving job for the town. And I imagine that will take place in next spring. So we typically will stage that where the milling and paving will be completed at the end of the project. And once that's completed, there's no more truck traffic um, impacting that because uh, we'll, we'll be responsible for, responsible for uh, one way or another. And as far as the private property goes, uh, our agreement with um, John uh, Zabretsky, who owns the property, uh, we would be responsible to maintain uh, or fix it when we're completed if, if we um, disturb the conditions. So we would be responsible to match existing conditions when we leave. Do you have any asbills? Do you know how, what payment structure that is? Uh, before we bring in equipment, we will bring, uh, we will do a pre-con video. Uh, so we'll do a video to document the existing conditions to cover ourselves and cover the owner and uh, just document it. Okay. And my impression is that it's pretty rough. Yeah. Um, Tony or Tom, do you have any questions? I, I have a couple. Justin, what is your title? Uh, I'm a project manager with the company. I'll, I'll be running the project. Um, so I'll be seeing it through from start to finish uh, and making sure it gets built per plan. How long have you been with, uh, with the company? I've been with Baltazar since 2011 when I graduated uh, college at UMass Amherst. Great. I'm told that um, you're very responsive to any public requests or concerns on, on anything and everything from uh, dust on the road construction work as well as uh, um, anything that might exceed what we're hearing tonight. 
So you don't you don't feel this site is going to have a lot of fill, a lot of gravel. It's mentioned that you're going to have uh, just a, a variety, of, a handful of uh, dump trucks and small amount of material is what I'm hearing now. It's not going to be anything extensive for any long period of time. Exactly. Um, we try to keep it uh, as minimal as we can. Um, one of the added benefits of, of this site is this site is, is literally abuts the construction. So, um, you know, like, like I try to try to explain, the construction needs to take place regardless. Um, one of the biggest concerns I heard from some of the surrounding residents is the, the noise and the time issue. Uh, unfortunately, that's going to happen uh, regardless because the construction is going to take place in the street on Church Street. Um, we need to cross the railroad tracks. Um, the work, uh, it, it needs to get done to upgrade the water for all these residents. Um, so unfortunately, the, the noise is going to happen in the street. Uh, I honestly think the noise is going to be a little bit louder in the street than the staging area because that's where we're going to be working eight hours a day uh, in the street. The staging area is just temporarily to store things and to minimize the impact in the right of way. Will you be the sole contractor or will there be any, any other subcontractors involved? Uh, we have other subcontractors to do uh, the paving at the end of the job. Um, we need to hire some other companies to assist us with the trucking. Uh, so they'll provide the trucking um, to, to haul the materials. Um, but what we're going to be doing, I'd say, probably 80% of the work. Thanks. Uh, this is Tom Dean. I'm uh, uh, I'm curious to find that, to see that uh, in the uh, materials we received, there was uh, no report from any other town officials, such as the town engineer or any other reviews that have taken place uh, with regards to this project. I presume all the reviews that are that have undergone are are being undertaken by the MDC, but uh, I appreciate uh, a word from either the contractor or from Peter. Uh, as to um, you know the, the review of the project as it relates to potential uh, engineering or environmental uh, impacts uh, uh, you know, upon either the subject property or adjoining properties from uh, this uh, staging area. Uh, Tom, let me take that. The only comment I have on that is during the initial uh, proposal to the town, um, they told me that we are not allowed to stage within the 100 foot flood limit um, unless we got prior permission from the wetlands commission so that's part of the reason why i selected the odd triangle shape on the uh, site map because i said uh, we can we can stage outside of that 100 foot limit and that that'll limit the impact basically and uh, your um, your documentation indicates that uh, you're looking um, in August through June. Um, there's kind of a, a, a two-month latitude there. Uh, uh, are you looking at, um, say, August 1 through June 30th, or um, or, or or a more uh, specific date timeline for the project? Uh, as it is now, my contract with the MDC is from August. Uh, well, well, now the clock's ticking now through May 15th. So I, I gave it uh, till June for a, for a month buffer, um, just in case unknowns come up. Okay, that's June 1 or June 30? Um, I, I mean, June 30th would be would be great uh, before 4th of July, get everything wrapped up. Okay. So it's really, uh, you know, the, the timeline that you're looking at is uh, uh, at the maximum uh, uh, August 1st through June 30th of 2021. Correct. Thank you. Um, Peter mentioned the uh, the Elm Street and the the Middletown Avenue construction staging areas from a couple of years ago. Um, Peter, were there issues associated with either or both of those? I remember we were visited by many neighbors, at least with respect to one of them, with 
you know, substantial complaints about work being done outside of the specified hours, um, dust, traffic, people driving on lawns, um, you know, not adhering to the conditions of the special permit. Is that, am I misremembering or is that accurate? No, you're, you're not misremembering. I did speak with Justin um, uh, as part of the application review to uh, remind him that we did have uh, some issues, primarily the town engineer was the town point. Uh, however, I was copied in on uh, almost all of those correspondence. Um, there were a couple of neighbors down there who complained um, legitimately uh, about early start times, trucks idling. Um, we had some conflicts with some of the farmers trying to use Elm Street to get into the fields. So there were a, uh, uh, there was a long list of uh, issues that we had to uh, get in the middle of. And I think it may have even uh, appeared on one of the PNZ agendas, Rich, as you were remembering, um, to, to assist in the enforcement uh, of that. Uh, Justin was not uh, involved in that as a project manager. It was a different uh, Baltazar uh, uh, employee. But yes, um, uh, there were issues um, with that project, particularly the Elm Street uh, not so much on the Middletown Avenue, but the Elm Street property. Okay, thanks. Uh, Justin, do you have any reaction to that? Um, yeah, I'd like to, I guess, second that um, the, the most concerns that we had from the last project was from the Elm Street property, which, uh, again, uh, the job that we did was the Mill Street Middletown area job in Elm Street um, unfortunately wasn't connected to the project. So the, the impact that the residents were seeing, they were getting no benefit uh, from that construction staging area. Uh, unfortunately, we had to travel a little bit to get to Elm Street. Uh, I think in this case, the Church Street construction project is having a potential staging area right on Church Street, which the benefits go hand in hand uh, with the residents and the construction impact. And you won't you won't be having the, the traveling of construction equipment throughout the town to get to a different staging area. Um, you essentially have the, the best case scenario where you can store and stage immediately adjacent to the construction project. Okay. How, how is the material that you're going to be using um, going to be delivered? Uh, material will be delivered in a triaxle dump truck. Uh, they're usually, um, they're your typical construction uh, dump trucks that you see, uh, not the trailer dumps. Okay. And those trips aren't included in the frequency that you mentioned earlier? Correct. So we will probably stockpile the material. So we will get um, deliveries throughout the day. Um, they, they typically only in the uh, one truck can probably make uh, one load every hour and a half, two hours. So if, if one truck can probably make four loads a day to deliver certain material. Uh, so it'll be evenly distributed throughout the day. And then the our trucks working from Church Street to the staging area will just transverse back and forth just to get the material uh, that they need to perform the construction. That's a question. Do you have any um, like dust control or anything that you do? Like if you if you had anything, let's just say you have that on Church Street, do you have to adhere to the same um, policy, the same spec uh, on Church Street as you would in the laydown area? You are like it seems like you're off site technically and you're in the back of that parking lot, but you're still right near other homes. So my concern is that whatever water for dust control or whatever you're using for it um, on Church Street that you may not be using that in the laydown area. I'm just curious what your policy is on that. Yep, as far as uh, dust control on the street itself, um, we re we're required to pave every day. So at the end of the day, the trenches will be paved so the traffic won't be stirring up um, the dust from traveling on a gravel road. Uh, as far as the staging area, um, Again, you know, we, we don't have any plans of ripping up the asphalt or, or disturbing the asphalt pavement parking lot area. 
So we won't generate any dust from that. The only potential dust that may be generated would be from dumping and loading up the piles uh, of material. And if, if that becomes an issue, or if there's any concern, we can, uh, we have water on site. Uh, we can periodically water the pile and, and control that with water. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, anybody else on the commission have any questions? Justin, in a project like this, is it uh, possible you'd finish early? I mean, we had a pretty warm winter last winter. Is, do you ever have projects uh, of this type of caliber to, that might be done a lot earlier than what you expect? Um, yeah, so I always shy away from from saying that the job will finish early, but uh, that that's our that's our goal. If we finish earlier, then that means we're doing something right. Um, so we would love to finish early. Um, there's two streets. There's Church Street. There's Knot Street. Um, we've had internal discussions about having uh, two crews simultaneously to try to advance the construction and finish sooner. Um, but regardless, there will be work next year to do the final paving. Um, just because New England, when we start to get in November, December, it's not an ideal time to be paving final course uh, on the streets. So, so we'll wait till better weather in the spring to do that. And do, do you ever uh, screen off with fencing the material that you have on any of your job sites? Yep, um, we've screened off in the past. Uh, if there's, if we abut properties where we're very close and visible and we need to screen off. Um, that's absolutely an option. Um, this site, I was initially thinking that, that we didn't need to screen it just because of the natural vegetation and the distance between uh, the railroad tracks separating the properties in the proposed staging area. There's a, uh, there's kind of a gate between this property and the one on Beaver Road to the south, is there any legal access that is going to be impaired by these stockpiles? Uh, no, no legal access. Um, as far as we're concerned, we're not going to use that Beaver entrance. Um, and if uh, you know, I'm going to make it clear to our guys, there's no reason for them to be using that entrance. Um, but as far as existing access and pre-existing arrangements for other people. Um, that area, that gate access that you reference, falls within the 100-foot um, buffer zone. So we have no reason to park equipment or have a, anything blocking that access. OK. Yeah, I mean, I, I never knew whether that was just a legacy thing, a convenience thing, or whether there was you know, perhaps like fire access to the Beaver Road building since that is separated from the road by a couple of crossings over the 100 year floodplain too. Okay, um, we did get a couple of pieces of correspondence, one from Susan Arcata at 41 Deerfield Road, writing to voice her objections to the use of 207 Church Street for construction staging. Uh, backyard borders the property and respectfully wants to say no thank you to truck engines, backup beeping, materials being loaded into trucks. Um, during the past year, our neighborhood has also endured barking, which continues. Uh, surely there must be other sites for the staging. I know there's a large state building and parking lot at the beginning of Franklin Ave that has been empty for a long time. Uh, there's also one from Sharon Cutts at 15 Deerfield Road, uh, has lived there 17 years, deeply concerned and distressed. Uh, the high points of the rationale, uh, regardless of zoning, as residents, we're entitled to quiet use and enjoyment of our property. Second, uh, in the current pandemic climate, many parents are working from home and their children are engaged in distance learning. And third, uh, this proposal represents the third step in a downward slippery slope by the owner regarding this property. Uh, 
mentioning that last year they experienced a series of tractor trailers in the parking lot that frequently ran all night and multiple hours of the day. And there are a number of questions that uh, she's been asked or she's asking. Um, oh, George is here, good. Um, George, did you have any questions for the applicant or any comments on this? I know that you just got here, but we've primarily been going over um, the, uh, the outline of activities that the applicant has proposed um, and what they proposed to do differently from what had been done, um, particularly on the, on the Elm Street and Middletown Avenue some of the projects. Uh, you're muted in case you wanted to say anything. Still muted, George. Still muted. We can't hear what you're saying. George, you're muted. Okay. There, there you go. All right. Hello, George. Um, I, I, I went down there today and drove the site, although I've seen that site a number of times, but uh, the trim of the driveway, you know, the bushes are grown out in there. There are potholes in the site, uh, some, a few. There's chairs, trash in there. Are they going to take care of that? Does the existing owner, whoever they are, care about that? I don't know. It's not a big deal. It's just some miscellaneous things that would improve the site now or after they get done clearing out of there eventually. Three things. Trim along the driveway, some potholes, and some trash chairs uh, behind the building. And if the commission members don't care about it, it's not a big deal. I just am noting it. That's all. No, we did we did cover some of those. Um, I think the applicant said that they were going to take a survey of the site and leave it in at least a good, good, at least as good condition as it is now. And when they're done, and that they are responsible for, you know, essentially uh, doing a mill and overlay on Church Street after the project is over. Um, okay. You mentioned the junk furniture yeah no no that i'm um, as they said they would pick up the site and when they left it and stuff or maybe even at the beginning you know that's all i care about that's fine and it's not a big deal okay that's fine good are there any members of the public that would like to speak I would, Michelle Furman. Okay, Michelle, could you please remind us your name and address for the record? So it's Michelle Furman and Brian Thompson. We're at 35 Deerfield Road. We uh, butt the property that we're uh, talking about. A uh, couple questions. Um, Justin, what kind of lights are gonna be set up in the back? Because we do not want lights hanging out in our back, in our back windows. You know, we don't want lights shining. If this is a nighttime operation, what kind of lights are going to be put up? Yep. So uh, let me answer that. Uh, as far as the nighttime operation, um, right now we're anticipating that the only required night work is at the intersection of Silas Dean and Church Street and Silas Dean and Knott Street. And we're estimating that there's approximately one to two weeks of work at each, each location. Um, so I would say... 90% of the project is going to be during the daytime. Uh, and when no, we are working just, at But Justin, we are, we border um, your, staging your staging area. So when pe people are loading and unloading trucks all night long, what kind of light, what's going to happen in the back? How are yep, So as far as uh, all the equipment has lights, so um, we may not need lighting, uh, additional lighting besides what's on the equipment. Um, but if additional lighting is required and we have light towers, uh, we'll only need one light tower in the staging area and it'll be directed uh, away from the railroad tracks 
towards the building and towards Silas Bean. I believe that is west, facing west. But you will be lighting up that area, and that will bring light into our residence, correct? Would, um, is your residence on the east side of the railroad tracks? Yes. So our lights will be set up facing the opposite direction, so the lights will not be shining or facing towards the residence? Yes, but they will be on, correct? Uh, during the nighttime, they will be on. Yes, so that will be illuminating our backyard, which is a big issue. Also, if the trucks are coming back and forth throughout the day and the night, we will have excessive noise of backing up, dumping sounds, correct? Yeah, but, uh, so for let me see, for night work, uh, we will not get deliveries at night. Uh, everybody will still deliver during the daytime. So the only but activity we'll at night will just be the construction activity that needs to take place um, at night regardless. It has to take will, place. They, well, will they be moving in and out? Will they be using beepers? Uh, they'll backup. be backup. Those are backup safety alarms. Yes, all, our, all of our equipment uh, has backup safety alarms. So they'll be going off near our homes. Is that what you're saying? Uh, we, we cannot shut those off, correct. Okay. All night long. All night long. Uh, Andrew, only yes, when correct? only only when they're backing up. <laughs> only when they're backing up, right? But we have small children. Um, do they only sleep during the back when they're not backing up? I mean, I mean that's kind of the rationale that you're saying. But also the vegetation that's supposed to hide the materials. Are we talking the weeds on the end, or are we talking because there is no vegetation on that side of the? of the auction house other than weeds, which are about three feet high. So are the material going to be higher than three feet high? Um, yeah, I was, I was out there a couple of weeks ago and, and from standing in the area, I couldn't see any uh, residents. I, I could see no buildings. So the vegetation was thick enough to, to block the view of the house. I can look out my back window right now and, and see the parking lot. Okay. I'm, so I, I didn't have I, the advantage for you, sir. If I can see the the auction house and the material like the the train track, we you can see us. And you said the vegetation on the on the property. You didn't say our vegetation. So you said your vegetation on that property would be blocking out the material. Yeah, I was looking at the vegetation between the houses and the property. So whether it's on the east side of the railroad tracks or the west side of the railroad tracks, um, or just vegetation in general. All right. Well, so those are some of the questions. Also, I didn't hear what Sharon's questions are. Can you please read us what Sharon has questioned for Justin? <coughs> Sharon cuts and made a statement, but we didn't hear her questions. Uh, on which portion of the Silosteen Highway will the MDC work specifically occur? Is there a town-owned piece of property that could benefit from the payment? Is the property in the price right parking lot that abuts the police station available for this purpose? Um, the next set of questions, what mitigation efforts are possible to address noise level frequency through each day and duration of the projects? How many trucks each day will need to be loaded? How long will it take to load each truck? And the last question, what is the rationale for using this site that has such significant impact on a residential area rather than one that is surrounded by more businesses on the Silosteen Highway, i.e. beer, woodworking, and supply store farther down the railroad tracks next to Ocean State Job Lots? So what is the justification for using this site? So my justification for using this site is from past experience that uh, having a site that abuts the construction site is, is the best and most efficient use for everybody. Um, from past experience, when we've had a construction site further away from the construction area, um, we've gotten calls from residents not understanding uh, why we're using that site when there's no construction going on. Um, this site, again, the construction is, is literally between Silas Dean Highway and Garden Street, um, down Church Street, uh, across the railroad tracks. So, this is going to lower, I'm going to vote, we're hoping that 
um, the the, this council is going to take in the quality of life and the disturbance that's going to happen to the residents that are abutting this property for a year, for almost a year of time, with no regulation over the times. That means it could go all night and all day, which will disturb our families, our children playing in the backyards, our sleep schedules. When there are other properties that have, have Justin, have any other properties been looked at besides this one? Have any other properties been even put up to this board to you? Yep, other properties were looked at, um, but no other properties have been put up to the, the board. Justin, can you expand a little bit on the, the nighttime work the duration of it and the because you you mentioned specifically church in silas dean and not in silas dean is that is that the only portion of the project where night work is going to be permitted and if so what's kind of the duration of that or is nighttime work permitted throughout the construction process uh nope so so nighttime work um, we would prefer to do the whole project during the day I mean, I'll be honest with you, nobody likes nighttime work. Um, we prefer not to, but the state of Connecticut uh, thinks nighttime work is less of an impact for traffic out on Silas Dean Highway. So they have told us that all the work at Silas Dean Highway um, intersection, so from the intersection to approximately 100 or 200 feet into the road, needs to be completed at night um, for traffic concerns. So the traffic impacts are minimal. Um, so what we need to do from a construction standpoint is we need to bring the water main from the middle of the intersection into the side street. And as soon as we get into the side street, then we're allowed to uh, continue during the days. So that's why I'm, I'm anticipating uh, one, one to two weeks of night work. And then we would switch back to days when we prefer to do days and, and everyone in the town, um, sounds like they prefer day work. We would continue days. So the 100 feet, uh, 100 linear feet coming from the center of Church and Silas Dean uh, going east on Church, that'll take a week or two. And that'll, yeah. that'll happen and that'll all happen within the same week or two. Not, uh, like, yes, I'm, not interspersed. Yeah. No, we're going to, once we start night work um, at the Church Street intersection, we'll finish that night work. Um, now the Knott Street intersection may be another week or a month later um, they may not be consecutive but each intersection will be consecutively started and ended and Michelle from it again why weren't the residents notified by mail um, of this going on why did we find out in the rare reminder and a little sign outside the auction house usually when there are activities affecting residents we get noticed and because of that, most of we may have many neighbors that may not even know this is going on this season. And I don't think it's clear that not everyone is going to be allowed to voice their opinion without having due notice. As far as my responsibilities, um, I, I mailed out letters, certificate of mailing um, to all the residents provided by the town. Nobody on our street got them. Not one of us did. Just, just to respond to that for the record, we do have certified or certificates of mailing. Um, there were, uh, Susan Arcata. When would... If you'd let me finish, please. Uh, Susan Arcata, 41 Deerfield was notified. Uh, 33 Lincoln, 21 Deerfield, 183 Church, 191 Church. Uh, 28 Deerfield, 29 Deerfield, 45 Deerfield, Church Street. Um, so 30, I live at 35, 35 Deerfield. 35 Deerfield, yes. Why? Why? How? 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 When were these letters sent out? Because not one of us received them. I've got certificates stamped by the U.S. Postal Service that they were mailed to you. So um, that's the applicant's when response. When? When were they mailed out? They were mailed out. Um, I have a, I'll let Justin respond to that. I have a stamp July 10th. We have not received any of that mail. 
and actually I'm on a chain of residents all asking the same question. Pretty much everybody who's asked questions found the uh, report at the front of the uh, auction house, and we all talked about, about it amongst ourselves. We never received any letters. How? Yeah, I can't explain that. No, either can we. All right. Are there any other members of the public who want to comment on this? There's a Carrie Williams there. I don't, I don't know if you want to speak. And then there's a 860-539-1717. Yeah, if anyone, anyone else wants to speak, now is the time. I want to speak. Oh, hello. hello. We want to speak. Okay. You had a small um, head. Hi. Uh, could you just please let us know your name and address for the record? Um, my name is Carrie Williams at 149 Garden Street and Ryan Williams at 126 Garden Court. Okay, thank you. Um, first, my question is, what's the amount of mileage that you send out to notify residents of who's going to be affected by the noise? Uh, the town requirement is to mail to all the property owners within a 300-foot radius in all directions. Okay, and then um, I find it disappointing because I uh, know that my family's been in of planning and zoning before regarding the doggy daycare that someone already mentioned. And so I'm not quite sure at what point they're going to recognize that there's a neighborhood behind that area. So I'm just trying to figure out how you think that after we, and you're also not mentioning that there was already a staging area on Garden Street two years ago when you did all of this before. And so I don't know why it wasn't completed, all this wasn't done before, and why another staging area has to be in our noise area. Hello? I don't know. Justin, do you know anything about that? Can you I'm, hear I'm me? I'm sorry. I can, can you hear me? Yes. 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 Um, as far as uh, touching on the other staging area, I'm unfamiliar uh, the location you're referencing, and I don't know the construction project. Um, unfortunately, it was, MDC. When, when... it was MDC. It was for the water pipe through Garden Street and all through Old Weathersfield, and there was staging right across the street from where I am right now on the Meeks property on Garden Street that the whole neighborhood behind that could hear as well the way that the town, the uh, noise travels. Yes, so as far as the, I don't understand the MDC's thinking of how they put out projects to do, um, it must be a need on uh, the infrastructure and the condition of the water main. So I would think that um, the water main on Church and Knott Street is, is at a point where it's failing or starting to fail, um, where they feel that the upgrades are needed uh, and the replacement of the water main outweighs the uh, concerns and, and the short-term uh, hindrance of, of the construction that needs to take place. But there was already just a grant and everything done and everyone made a really big deal about everything being replaced down here and how we're going to be good to go for a while. And now it's a year later and you're doing construction again on Knott Street and again on, on Church Street uh -huh. and we, the neighbors, have to pay the price. Yeah, I apologize. I can't speak for other construction contracts or But it was NBC other... with Balthazar. I have a question. Um, so last year uh, in Newington on Cedar Street, MDC replaced and laid pipe, and Balthazar was the construction company. They started nighttime work, and the residents of the town complained, and it had to be changed to daytime work only on Cedar Street in Newington. So why in Weathersfield is it now being that it can be done at night? Why can't we have it just during the day so we don't have to listen to the trucks backing up and loading up and depositing their load? 
because it will be dump trucks and heavy duty construction vehicles. Yeah, that um, unfortunately I don't have the authority as a contractor to make that decision. Um, that would have to be something coming from the state of Connecticut and okay. the Department of Public Works, the Weathersfield um, Communications. Okay, so all right, Justin. So I'm not going to ask you this. I'm going to ask the uh, Weathersfield Planning and Zoning if Newington could say no for their residents to spare them the overnight noise why are we not afforded the same luxury one town over i thought the explanation was that it was connecticut dot requiring that it be done at night on the silas Thien. i don't know what road was being done in doing well, cedar street is a dot road dot road also yep. so there can't so they wouldn't say oh cedar street can, can't be done at night or the Silas Dean can. They're both DOT roads. Okay. Uh, Justin, do you don't you take notation of when sites were done in areas already previously working for the same company? Wouldn't you already know that Garden Street was done? Yeah, or don't you research and think, oh, they just had something done on Garden Street a couple of years ago? Like, isn't that someplace town knowledge that you would know already? Yeah, you mentioned that Baltazar did construction on Garden Street, and I have to object to that. We we have it not. It doesn't done even matter actually who did it. It actually doesn't even matter who did it. Isn't there some place where you know that there was already a staging area down here once already? Like that's not town known information. Uh, it's it's not public knowledge. If, if there's an agreement between a private property and and the construction firm, uh, we may not be uh, aware of it. Okay, I have another question also. So I know, Justin, you said that other um, locations were considered, but this was the only one that was brought up before planning and zoning. Why would you only bring up putting a staging area in a residential area when there's places on the Silestine Highway that are zoned for commercial use? You have um, the community center. You have right on the Silestine Highway, you have the Corpus Christi Church and the Corpus Christi School that have very large parking lots. Why aren't those being utilized when they're on the Silestine Highway for a Silestine Highway project? Well, I, I think uh, the work on Silestine Highway is only limited to the intersection of Silestine Highway and Church Street. Or Silestine right, Highway but Church and Street's Knott Street. not Knott Street. So why should right. Church so, Street have to be the staging area for Knott Street? Why don't we call it even and put it somewhere on the Silestine Highway and keep Church Street and Old Weathersfield out of it? This yeah, this staging area looked um, the most uh, reasonable um, for the construction. According portion to of what? It. Why? What makes it the most reasonable? Proximity. Pro but there's other places that have the same proximity. What about the town hall parking lot? That's right across the street. I don't think that's a reasonable uh, location. Why not? It's not in anyone's backyard. Hello, does anyone hear me? Yes. Can, Hello? Can, can someone answer me? Why I've the town hall is not, a, not a user? Heard. Yes. Why is it only the only place that was presented was a residential area? Well, I, I believe the law is not a residential law. I, I believe it was zoned for commercial. Um, right, but, but as it far hasn't why, been a why that area? business in years. And that doesn't even matter. There's an entire neighborhood behind it that the town does not acknowledge, as we've seen already from the doggy daycare. And so at some point, someone is going to have to take the neighbors in that area, have to view their peace of mind in some way. We're already listening to dogs barking all the time, and the planning and zoning has not done anything to fix that. They haven't done their fence. They haven't done everything. So we can't depend on the planning and zoning in Weathersfield. So we can't trust you, Justin, to do what you're going to say you're going to do because it never ends up being that way. And also, I'd like to know why we can't just have it as daytime construction. Back to my original point, Newington was able to make it a daytime-only job. Why isn't that an available option for Weathersfield residents? Again, Roberts, that's not my curious. decision to make. Can I, can I jump in real quick? Um, curious if we go back to our, our usual method of 
comment and response. I, I feel like I'm, I'm getting a little lost in the questions. I just want to make sure that a question is asked and that we're addressing it. Um, this just feels very conversational. So I'm just trying to, trying to organize my thoughts. Well, it's tough no, when it's uh, not I'm sorry. I'm sorry, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Um, no, I mean, and, and there are two people talking at once a fair number of times. I've tried to be. Well, no one's answering the question, so I'll keep it conversational for you. And I would like an answer to this question. Why was Cedar Street in Newington forced to only do daytime construction for an MDC project with the construction company of Balthazar, yet Weathersfield is not afforded that same opportunity. Hello? I, I don't think anyone on the commission is familiar enough with that to be able to answer it, and I don't know whether Justin is either. So. I'm not asking Justin. I'm asking planning and zoning. Well, and I think I answered that, too. You didn't answer it. You said you don't know. So can you find out an answer if that's an option to only have daytime construction? Hello? If the commission can wants to find out, we can find out. So you will find out. We will discuss it. And and there there what? seem to be there seem to be two people talking, but only one at the beginning had identified herself. Rich, I've i muted the other people who, who were interrupting, so maybe we'll just focus on Carrie, get her questions, and then we'll move on to the call the other folks who are waiting. Just okay. to disorganize. No. Yeah, I, mean, also... I thought there were two people there. I, mu I muted Somebody... people because they no, guessed... no, I mean... Yeah, okay. Someone also has some background conversation going on on their line. If they're not talking, if they could mute it. Okay, so you're going to look into that and find out? We're going to talk about it. If, if we keep the hearing open, we'll look into that. I don't understand why you can't just say yes, you'll look into it. What do Not you need to decision. talk about? Wait, but don't you care about the residents of Weathersfield? Yes. Okay, so you can say, yes, I will look into it. You don't need to talk about it. You can just say, yes, I will look into it. All right. Yes. So yes, you will look into it. We will discuss it. No, no, sir. It doesn't need to be a discussion. It just needs you to, I'm raising a valid point and I'm asking you to look into it. I yes. want to know that you will look into it. I don't want you to discuss whether you're going to look into it. I want you to say, yes, that is a valid point. Let me look into that. Maybe you can hear what I'm saying this time. It's not my decision. We are a commission of X number of people. As a group, we decide whether we close the public hearing, whether we continue the public hearing, whether we look into it, whether we look for additional information from the applicant, whether we look for additional information from the staff. I'm not going to promise anything on behalf of the other five or six members of the commission who are here. I'm not trying to be- Well, I think, why don't we pull everyone then, right now? And if they all say yes, then you guys can all look into it. Not the way- No, we're... no, we're not doing that. Why? That's not how a public hearing works. So the rules of how it should go are more important about just saying, yes, that's a valid point, I'll look into that? I, I, I don't think this conversation is going anywhere. Well, no, because you won't listen to what I'm saying. No, I, I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying and you have a valid point. You're not Thank listening you. to my response. I heard you. Okay. No, you didn't. What are you getting all worked up about? All right, so I look forward to hearing the answer. Okay. Do you have any other questions? No, you can open it up to other so people. I just want to clarify, you said in the beginning, I am at 149 Garden Street and she's at 126 Garden Street. The cool. two of us, Garden Court, the two of us are here together because it affects both people. So that's why we're both here together. Okay. Okay. So what was your name, ma'am? Who was the second person that, that was what we didn't get? Ryan Williams at 126 Garden Court. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Does anyone else from the public wish to speak? I'm gonna, Rick, Rich, I'm going to unmute uh, Michelle again if she has um, other questions, and then I'll move on to a 860-539-4434 number. Okay. I only had one other question, which is why not use the old, the Price Right um, shopping center at the far end where there is no businesses anymore, and that it could, it's right off of Knott Street. It's right on the Silasine Highway. Was, was I not heard? Oh, yeah, you were. Yeah. So why not use that area, which does not abut right up to residents? I don't know. Maybe the applicant can answer that. Justin? Yeah, Justin. He's not muted. No. Nope. Nope. Sorry, guys, I was muted. Um, we, we looked at this lot and we thought this was the most practical lot uh, to present to the board, uh, given that it's on Church Street and, and abuts the property. It abuts our property, too. And this other area would not run into residential area. Well, it abuts the railroad, and the railroad abuts That's your property. No, yes, we know it abuts our property. But what I'm saying is, if you use the Price Right Shopping Center at the far end, it does not abut anybody's property. It's right next to the police station. It's right next to the Silasine Highway. It is not, it's right near Knott Street. And you would not be in a resident, you would not be next to a residential area. There are yeah, other I, I, there are other options better than coming into a re right next to a residential area with noisy trucks with our children that is going to go all night long. Justin, would you like this in your backyard? Uh, if, if it was for a construction project that uh, was for the better of my neighborhood, I would let it and I would let it happen. With your young children that we can hear? I mean, you would not want to be keeping them up all night <laughs> and having their play yard be attuned to all this noise and dusty with debris behind our houses that are is going to be visible. I can't believe that you would actually want this happening in your backyard or any of these people on the council or on the board. Would you want this in your backyard? Think about that when you make this decision because we do not want it in our backyard. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is the last person there want to say anything? Yeah, four, four, three, four. I can't tell whether Peter's frozen or not. He is it's frozen. And I don't know if I can. Yeah, I, I don't know how to unmute. We can't unmute. Oh, there you go. Unmute. Oh, hello. 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 Yes. Hi. Sorry, it's taking me a little bit to figure out the phone. My name is Karen Cuts. I live at 15 Deerfield Road, right behind the auction house. Uh, my wife, Sharon, sent in the letter that you uh, read a little bit earlier, and I, I appreciate your time to read that. I have a few things I just like would like to point out and, and add to the concerns that were expressed already in her letter. Um, okay. I, I have been kind of, I uh, have been listening and I want to refer to um, Weathersfield Zoning's own regulations. Uh, I heard Article 5 talked about earlier um, and that the auction house is actually the town center business di district. And when I look through that Article 5, um, it, again, it was talked about earlier that under I, other uses, number five, other uses similar to the permit, permitted uses, um, you, you only, you, in your own words, you only picked that one because that's the only one that came close enough to a regulation that might fit this. Um, I would argue that, that it does not fit um, the use according to your, your own zoning regulation. Um, and there's nothing else on uh, all those regulations, all those 
uh, regulations that fit. I would also refer to Article Number Eight, uh, specifically the special permit criteria when it talks about suitable location, neighborhood compatibility. I think this is what a lot of people have expressed here that basically a construction site, it's not pleasing or inviting to this area. Um, Justin, you've talked about daytime hours, but if you talk, if you realistically look at what's the time frame, we're talking eight, 18 to 19 hour days of noise out of 24 hour period, whether that be for a week, whether that be for two weeks, whether that be when not street is going to be having their construction and then all those weeks gear up again, that we're having 19 hours worth of noise of trucks being loaded, forklifts, bobcats being loaded and backed up and dumping and all of that happening. And that is just not um, good for our neighborhood, good for our property prices, good for anything. And I know this work has to, to take place because the, the water mains are um, in dire repair. Um, but according to these uh, zoning regs, that that, that, that is, um, I would hope that you, you you would folks would recognize that and and not let this proceed under those um, things that were cited as far as those sections. Um, we are. I, I didn't hear earlier if your mailing list included our residents of 15 Deerfold Field Road. We again did not receive any kind of written notice. Um, and again, just to reiterate, we are working from home. We have school-age kids, um, and for 10 months at least, for 19 hours a day for however long, that is just not conducive to trying to work the jobs that we work, educate our kids, and maintain a, a household and a residence that's supposed to be our um, our getaway, our, our seclusion, our, our area of solitude. Um, and rest, and that's just not conducive to that. And I, I just felt like I needed to highlight those points, and I am absolutely against using the auction house to uh, for this construction site. It sounds like there are other opportunities other than giving Mr. Uh, Zielinski the money in his pocket. I wonder if there is a site somewhere in, in Weathersfield that the town of Weathersfield could get that money paid to the town to use a certain site instead of it lying in the pockets of the gentleman who owns the auction house at this time. Thank you. Thank you. I, I would just like to, to point out, um, you just mentioned 18 hours of noise uh, in construction. I'd like to clarify, I'm not sure where the confusion was, but uh, the construction is either going to be during the daytime or the nighttime, not both, so it's not going to be 18 hours of continuous noise. Um, during the daytime, it will only be eight hours of the day between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m., and then when the night work is required, there will be no daytime work going on. It will only be night work, so I just wanted to make that clear that it is only eight hours of construction per day. Uh, again, I'm referring to your own Balthazar letter that talks about the work hours, and it says, that during the daytime, eight hours between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m., Monday through Friday, and a minor portion of the work to be done, uh, which is Connecticut DOT is requiring, is between 8 p.m. and 5 a.m. We have had other projects within this neighborhood that even down on Elm Street that I was listening to, there were people where trucks were going and things were happening outside of hours, and why would not we think that that would happen in our neighborhood when we've already been dealing with barking dogs? and railroads that have been coming through and cutting down our trees that were far off the track that would have been a barrier for sound or visual sites, and now those things are gone because the railroad company came and cut down all of those. So I, I do take issue, and I do debate that the hours are probably going to be closer to the 19th, depending on uh, how long your weeks or two weeks projects on uh, – Silestine and, and Church Street last, and then again when Not Street Project uh, gears up to do its piece. Yep, I appreciate you for pointing that out, um, but definitely only going to be eight hours of construction per day, um, not going to be more. Okay. 
Is there anyone else uh, who wishes to speak? Yeah, it looks like Peter's gone. And I think at this point, um, you know, we probably should have a conversation about whether we're going to close the hearing tonight or continue it. Um, personally, um, I, I would rather have more than five or six of us making a decision if possible, um, particularly not knowing how people might vote uh, and the need to have at least five of the six people sitting here vote in favor of something to approve it. Um, you know, that, that may be problematic and it may in fact be unfair to the applicant to proceed. Um, I also have concerns, not that things weren't mailed, but that things may not have been delivered or received or opened and scrutinized by people um, if they did get it in the first place. So, um, you know, there, there may be some members of the public who are within the affected area who are unaware of what's going on here. Um, and, you know, uh, one of the speakers did raise the question of whether there was some way we could uh, request to have the night work changed to day work here as was done in Newington. Um, you know, and I'm completely unfamiliar with what the procedure was or what the project was in Newington and whether this is apples and oranges because of the nature of the road or, or what, but uh, you know, frankly, I think, you know, given the, the sensitivity of this for the, for the neighbors, um, you know, having a, having a couple of weeks to find out the answer to that question, as well as to um, allow more than a bare quorum of the, the commission members to uh, participate uh, would make me feel better. Not that I'm excited about going through this all again and two weeks, but I, I think out of fairness, both to the public and to the applicant, it, it might be a reasonable way to proceed, but uh, uh, I can be convinced otherwise. Mr. Chairman, I'm inclined to agree with you, uh, especially with the town planner not being on and joining us right now. The questions are open on the Newington daytime only, the mailing not being delivered. I would have preferred a collaborative between someone from the NBC, Mr. Zabretsky and the company to be here. Uh, the history of the staging on the street is uncleared. I think those are good questions. I think uh, championed by the Sharon Cutts letter was pretty legitimate. And, and more importantly is the nighttime issues. Once, that, uh, once the foliage changes, the leaves come off the trees, and maybe it is only eight hours per day for what Justin said, but you know, the lights do matter in that neighborhood as well as you know compounding issues come through. So I, I think it would be good to have the town plan around this with us to continue those discussions. And I'm more inclined to, I was initially inclined to just vote no anyway on this, but I think continuing it might be wise. I would agree, Rich, on, sorry, Ryan, I, I would agree on continuing it, you know, for the reasons you, you mentioned. And it seems that if, if it were possible for the DOT to authorize night work, that would go a long way towards addressing some of the concerns we've heard, and, and I guess I would urge the applicant, if there's anything further they can do on that front to try to get a positive answer from DOT, whether it's with the help of the MDC or possibly even the town of Wethersfield uh, staff or administration. And if, if the answer is that it can't be done, I would like to just have a much more specific report next time on what was tried, um, you know, despite not being able to, to get a good answer. Um, and I guess on, on the rest of it, you know, there were a lot of alternate sites that were suggested by some of the speakers. I, I mean, I think the reality is if a property owner doesn't want to make an arrangement to do this, then it's not going to work. And I assume some, a lot of sites have 
activities on them such that it may not be conducive or feasible to have this kind of use tie up a big piece of a of a lot or parking spaces or whatever but um you know i would I, I would also think if next time the applicant could perhaps just be a little more specific in terms of some of the options that were considered um, that they don't feel would work um, that would be helpful too okay i think um just to piggyback a little bit on that uh, so for like this the silestein highway i mean there's there's precedent of trunk lines getting reconstructed like between church and the police station and they're they're closing down lanes here and there so they, they they've gone from four lanes to two lanes at, at other times um you know in the middle of the day like during lunch so i'm i'm inclined to think that we can do this without any night work uh which i think would be beneficial to the town and i also think or you know, to the residents and i think that um you know maybe a more context sensitive uh, location could potentially be chosen. Um, it's just that I don't know, I don't know what other locations were we would consider. It'd be nice to have a couple alternatives to aid in the discussion as opposed to one option. Um, and I think that that would aid in the discussion with the Deerfield residents um, going forward just so that they know that this is like a vetted solution as opposed to the only option um, I, I think it'll just go a long way uh, for the next conversation that we have. Um, sure, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I agree with my fellow commissioners and, and you on continuing this hearing for the reasons cited and uh, all the issues that came up. I would like to make one more point, though. Why is DOT all of a sudden saying uh, no, uh, no daytime work? Uh, didn't the gas company put in lines uh, just north of, uh, uh, you know, Wells Road there a year or two ago? And I thought that was daytime work, but maybe it wasn't. That's what I'm uh, talking about. It, it could be like a department policy that they yeah. try to avoid it versus it's something that they're mandated that they can't do. So uh, maybe a little research into that policy. Yeah, and I think that's all I'm saying is maybe we ought to look into that and ask those questions as well as the Newington issue that was brought up. Right. Yeah, Peter, while you were gone, um, <laughs> essentially, it seems, it seems to be happening uh, uh, frequently here. So, so sorry about that. No, and I, I got text messages from residents who were saying that the, the YouTube wasn't working either, but. Uh, what I had suggested was given the fact that we were, you know, just barely at a quorum, um, that there was, you know, were some members of the public who, who may not have, you know, noticed or received um, the mailing that was, you know, apparently sent to them, uh, and that there were a number of open questions, including the one about the night work on the, on the Silas Dean that, uh, you know, I, I suggested that you know, we keep the hearing open until our next meeting, just so that, um, you know, out of fairness to both the public and to the applicant, we have a fuller complement of commission members voting on it, you know, given that it requires five affirmative votes to, to carry. And, you know, based on the, the conversations as we sit here tonight, you know, that, that's certainly not a guarantee um, that, uh, you know, we keep it open so that um, we can get get better information and uh, you know any additional public input that that we might have missed out on tonight by either technical issues or people being away or so forth um, sure i think the next meeting, seem to have, sorry. Yeah, i think the next meeting if, if i'm not mistaken is august 4th um yeah i don't remember which day but i think you're right yep Okay. Need to make a motion to continue, Mr. Chen. Yeah, that, I'd, I'd welcome that. Okay, make a motion to continue this hearing to Second. August 5th, 4th, rather. Fourth. All right. Second. Uh, Ryan seconded it. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? 
Okay, the hearing is continued to August 4th. Do we want to do the organizational meeting or do that on August 4th as well when there are more people around to, uh, or, or should we fill all of the various liaison positions with people who aren't here? <laughs> <laughs> We've done that in the past. Yeah, we have done that. Stranger things have happened. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, if, you know, it, if someone wants to suggest that we postpone that too, you know, I'd, I'd appreciate that motion. Make a motion to postpone the election, if you want to call it, uh, uh, to the August 4th meeting. I'll second okay. that motion, Mr. Vice Chair. All right, thanks. Um, is there any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 I think uh, Commissioner Vieira is on here, but he's muted. What's the, which um, number do you think it is? Nine four six eight, I think. Is that you, Mike? Thank you, Rich. Yes, that's me. Hello, everyone. Okay. Yeah, I recognized you. You look kind of like a phone. <laughs> <laughs> it happens sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other business slash staff reports. Peter, did you want to talk about the uh, self storage facilities while we're while we're here? Sure, just to give you a, a quick uh, update. Um, as you recall, we are still in the midst of a moratorium on, on uh, applications for self storage facilities. The EDIC and the RDA have been uh, working uh, on the uh, issue. Uh, they actually met this morning and voted to uh, pass on a series of recommendations to the Planning and Zoning Commission for consideration. I did uh, try and send those out earlier today. I don't know if you uh, received those or not, but nevertheless, um, they are recommending that um, we can, uh, once the moratorium is over, they institute uh, new regulations that basically uh, continue to permit self-storage facilities, uh, basically under a mixed-use development um, scenario where they would not be permitted um, by themselves. They would have to be accompanied either in um, one building or in a development scenario with multiple buildings and subject to a whole series of standards that are not in place at this uh, point in time. Uh, the quandary is that in order to have the hearing on the regulations before the moratorium expires, they basically have to be filed by the end of this week. Um, the thought I am having now is to give you, uh, give us a little bit of extra time is maybe um, consider extending the moratorium for another month or two so that you're not forced to vote on something on the first night that you uh, receive it uh, and then have a, a window of opportunity for somebody uh, to come in under the old regulations. Um, before the new regulations get put in place. So I was looking for some um, guidance um, on that. And, I, and also, if you could take some time before we actually file an application to get me any of your thoughts on the draft recommendations, that would be helpful as well for me uh, as I finalize, um, finalize these regulations. So what I would probably do under that scenario is file uh, an amendment to continue the moratorium just for a very limited period, a couple weeks, and then file another application to actually amend the regulations so that they uh, work um, in a timely way with each other. So I wanted a little little feedback on that uh, this evening. Uh, Peter, it's Tom Dean here. Hey. I'm, um, it seems like a more uh, that there's there's going to be a number of, of steps uh, that will have to uh, be uh, followed in order to bring closure to the issue and uh, an extension of a moratorium for uh, two weeks or even 30 days may not be long enough. It, um, it seems to me that uh, you, 
you, we're probably looking reasonably at a minimum of maybe a 60-day extension uh, or possibly a 90-day extension uh, so that um, uh, uh, things can uh, be put in place in a reasonable and orderly fashion uh, to deal with all the, the questions and issues that, that, that uh, pertain to the issue. Tom, why don't you make a motion? 90 days. I don't, I don't think I need a motion uh, today. I, we would have to actually have, a, have it on the agenda, um, do some you know, public notice. Uh, I, I don't think, and maybe the lawyers here could chime in. I don't think we can do that tonight without you know, due, due process uh, for interested parties. But I just wanted to give you the heads up that um, potentially at the first meeting in September, we would discuss voting on the moratorium and then I would, um, you know, come in with the regulation amendment for the, you know, more formal new regulations. When does the moratorium expire currently? September 5, I believe. And you're, you have a meeting September 1st. So I was trying to time this to get it in, but, I, but then again, at the same time, it's putting pressure on you guys to vote that night. And I didn't want to do that without giving you, you know, a couple of, maybe a couple of meetings after that into October or mid October or something like that, um, which I think would be more than adequate time. I, the draft regulations I sent to you have been, you know, beat up a little bit. And uh, I think, you know, have a lot of good uh, things for you to consider in there. So um, that's kind of my thought process. Yeah, I mean, I, I think something like November 15th would probably be fine that, you know, that should give us time, particularly since there is, you know, a work product to react to now. Uh, it's my okay. only, my only thought is that, you know, since a moratorium is technically an amendment to the regulations, if we voted on it on the first, you know, could it have an effective date as soon as, you know, the fifth, just so that there isn't, isn't a gap in time, but, uh, you know, I know you need to do the, the CROG referrals and all that kind of thing, so. Yeah, so that would uh, require us to do that by the end of the week. Um, and then it, we would come in after that with the more formal changes. So I think I can, I can make, I can definitely make that happen. Okay. I don't know, does anybody have any concerns or additional thoughts on that? can't see the agenda, so I had to turn the lights on. <laughs> yeah, dark. All right, so no additional thoughts or comments on the moratorium extension. Okay, uh, next minutes of June 16th. Make a motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Okay, is there a second? Second. Second. Second from Joe. Um, any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Any other staff reports? We do have uh, two pending applications. They didn't make it uh, on the agenda. Uh, there's a uh, resubdivision application pending for the uh, Buck property at the corner of Jordan Lane and uh, Hartford. Um, Avenue, um, which I believe we're going to advertise for your next meeting. And then we are anticipating an application from Comstock Ferry. If you um, uh, maybe saw, saw that the property has sold to the uh, operators uh, of the heirloom market. So they are now the new owners of the property. Uh, they will have an application. Um, I don't, they were going to file it today. I don't know if it came in, but by tomorrow morning. So that may also make it onto the next uh, meeting agenda. So you might have three, three applications. And then uh, we, did, um, we did put together an application to incorporate, um, uh, as we mentioned at a previous meeting, some low impact development LID regulations. Those will be scheduled for the second um, PZC meeting in August. 
Um, so those are the pending applications at the present time. We're also anticipating a couple of other applications coming in. Uh, what was that last one, Peter? The last one, if George, if you remember, we talked about uh, incorporating uh, low impact development regulations into the zoning regulations for stormwater management, water quality, those kinds of things. We're under uh, a directive from the DEEP to incorporate that into our zoning regulations. So we have um, drafted those regulations. We sent them to CROG um, as required by statutes and scheduled it for the uh, second uh, meeting in August. And that, that'll affect all land development only, not existing properties. It will impact That's new 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 development um, as it relates to your zoning regulations. Uh, we'll come back at some point in the future uh, to discuss the subdivision regulations and whether we want to do that as well, but this would be for your zoning regulations. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks. Okay, is there anything else? Anyone, any other members of the public who wish to comment? We still, um, have I think one member of the public um, on the call? I, I believe at the bottom there. I'm gonna show nine nine three two. Yeah, nine nine three two. I'm gonna, in case there's a public, general public comment before we uh, wrap up. Yeah, Ryan said he also got kicked out and is trying to get back in. Maybe that's all set. Okay. Okay. So no, no, no more comments. It looks like. Okay. Anything else from the commissioners? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I'll second. Second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you.